Welcome to this edition of City Connector right here on City TV. I am Lee Brogdon Culberson of ProfessionalMojo.com and this is the place to be the last Tuesday of every month at high noon here in beautiful Arbor Place Mall. If you'd like to be a member of the hopping live audience, I encourage you to come on down the last Tuesday of every month. This is also the place to be to learn more about the people, the places, and the events that make the city of Douglasville and the surrounding areas so wonderful. Wonderful. So sit tight and we will be right back with our first guest. Welcome back to City Connector. We are so thrilled you are joining us. Now, my first guest is Tanya Jackson. She's a public educator with the Cobb and Douglas Public Health Department. And Tanya, we're gonna be talking today about an important part of the Live Healthy Douglas that focuses on youth, right? Correct. So thank you for joining us. You're welcome. So tell us about this. There's really three parts to it. I wanna make sure that we're able to cover all of those parts. Okay, Cobb and Douglas Public Health has a coalition called Live Healthy Douglas, which empowers Douglas County to have a drug-free and healthy community. Part of the mission of Live Healthy Douglas is the uh, Douglas Alcohol Prevention Program. Mm -hmm. uh, and the part, the... Uh, the part that, 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 that focuses on the that youth. That focuses sure. on, uh, is to reduce the onset underage drinking among nine and 20-year-olds 20, 20 in Douglas County as the onset age of underage drinking in Douglas County is 12 years old. So let's talk about that for a second because when we were discussing this prior to coming on to City Connector, I was pretty shocked that it said that the onset age of underage drinking in Douglas County is 12 years old. 12 years old! How in the world did you find that out? Well, we find, found that out from the Georgia Behavioral Health Sa Survey, which is a statewide survey that found that, that Douglas County teens are indeed getting their alcohol from adults that are 21 and over. So was that number surprising to you as someone who works in this field and, and, and works with adults as well as children? Was the age of 12 shocking? It, it seems shocking to me. Uh, no, it wasn't because we find a lot of it is, is introduced in middle and high school years. Wow. And the majority of it, again, introduced, brought in by adults. Brought in by adults, correct. Adults and, over 21. Okay. So the, the focus then of this program is to educate adults about the harm they're doing to youth, how to not do it, how to say no, consequences. Talk to us about that. Yes. Douglas Alcohol Prevention Program has three strategies that they're currently doing. Uh, the Teen Party Ordinance, the Creating Lasting Family Connections Program, mm -hmm and the Be The Wall campaign. The first one is the Teen Party Ordinance. It's an ordinance that we're trying to get passed that holds adults responsible for providing alcohol to teens and a location for them to drink. The Creative Lasting Family Connections is a family enrichment program uh, where teens and adults learn how to communicate and it also teaches teens refusal skills. We are offering an upcoming segment of that program at the Boys and Girls Club. And then also the be final thing is Be The Wall campaign, where we ask adults and youth to be the wall between youth and alcohol. All right, so let's take a little bit closer look at each one of those. The okay. first one, the teen party ordinance. So as someone who deals in social media all the time and marketing, I see a lot of chatter on Twitter, oftentimes on the weekends, talking about these parties, be somewhere at XYZ time, and we're gonna have all kinds of stuff for you. So this really is something that would, would hold those adults accountable because obviously they're using someone's house, location, whatever it might be, to have this kind of party. Correct. It would hold adults accountable and then there would be consequences because it would be breaking the law. It would be an ordinance. And this is in process at this point. Correct. Okay. And do we know when that might be come about? Um, we are working on it currently this year and probably the next. Okay. A lot of that happens in social media, after the dark. That's the way it kind of gets passed around for sure. Now the second part of this was the Creative Lasting Family Connections and you're calling that a family enrichment program. So talk to me a little bit about some of the programs that are available and what you do to help families talk to one another and, and, and really encourage their youth not to be a part of this. Okay, well each night it's a two hour program. We put the parents and the youth in separate rooms 
So they each get a separate instru instructor. I like that. Are you saying that kids are unlikely to say important things in front of their family? Correct, we are. <laughs> okay, good. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. So yes, so that's uh, so the program is several weeks long. Mm -hmm. um, each program is two hours. We separate the adults and we bring in, um, you know, certified instructors to come speak about the topics. Okay, so it's going to be talking to the youth about this is not a smart thing to do. There'll be consequences. Here's what could happen long term. And the adults is how to say no. I think sometimes parents want to be friends and not and, and do what they think is fun. And I've also heard, you can correct me, wouldn't it be better if I just did it here because they're going to go somewhere else and do it anyway? Is that yes. a myth you hear a lot? Yes, that's a myth, yes. Okay, and so you address all of that and help them have that conversation. We do, and we help the adults and the youth be able to talk among each other because I think it starts at home. Good. And also I would think, too, that you're, you're empowering the youth to talk to other youth and say, you really should say no or you shouldn't be a part of this. Correct. Peer pressure is a very important influence when it comes to teens and alcohol and substance abuse. Right, peer pressure really continues to be an important thing. No matter how old you are, it's always there, yes. for sure. All right, and then the last one is the Be The Wall campaign. Yes, we can all be part of the Be, Wall, Be The Wall campaign by communicating with your kids, not making alcohol easily accessible by not hosting parties, and also locking up your alcohol. No, I really hadn't thought about that. So you may be out of town, you're on vacation, maybe you're just late coming in from work and they come home from school early. So make sure that things are put away safe. Correct. Be a responsible parent and lock up your alcohol when your teen is at home. And I think it also takes a little bit of a community as well. I think if you have other kids over at your house, even though your stuff might be, might be locked up, if you hear them having conversation or if you see them talking about a party, I mean, how much should you really pry into your teen's life? Well, that's part of the creating lasting family connections is teaching them all about that communication. Good, good. All right, super. Now, if people want to find out more information about those three programs, they can go to a website. Uh, they can go to the website, the Cobb and Douglas Public Health.com website. And then the um, Douglas Alcohol Prevention Program will also be present at two upcoming events, the September Saturdays Festival on September 20th, and then also the Greystone Power Member Health Fair, which is on Oct Saturday, October the 11th. And what can happen there? If parents have questions and maybe they haven't gone to the website yet, they can go to the booth there and they can ask some questions, get some literature? Correct. We have pamphlets available. We also have public health educators. We also have the Be The Wall pledges. We have them both for adults and teens that they are able to sign at the booth and post on the wall. So they okay. can actually become part of the wall. Okay. Wonderful. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the things that you might need to make this happen because this is a very important initiative. Everyone should be involved whether or not you have kids, whether or not you think your kids may be exposed to this. It's important for us to pull together as a community and there are a couple things in particular that can help you out. Correct. One of the things we're doing is you can get involved with our 14th annual Power and Truth Conference happening at the First Baptist Church at Douglasville on Tuesday, October 21st. Power and Truth is a conference that empowers Douglas County youth, youth to resist alcohol, um, tobacco use, and all other substance abuse. Prevention is a primary focus with an emphasis on empowering youth to resist media manipulation and peer pressure. There are three ways to get involved, sponsorship, volunteerism, and attendance. The first way to get involved is by sponsoring the conference. Live Healthy Douglas through the Douglas Future Foundation is accepting in-kind donations of gift certificates and uh, donations to sponsor and support the Power and Truth Conference. Attendance is free for participants, so we rely heavily on sponsorships from everyone to help support the conference. You can visit douglashealthfutures.org for more information on how to donate. Right now, we're also accepting volunteers um, for the conference on October 21st from 7 to 4 and okay. a preparation day that is October the 7th from 9 to 4. We are able to accommodate you by doing shifts or half days, so you can also sign up CobbAndDouglasHealth.com as well. 
Um, last but not least is to encourage youth or yourself to attend the conference. Now all attendees from the conference are from Douglas County middle and high schools okay. and are chosen by their advisor. So if you are a parent that wants your child to be able to go to the conference, you need to see your advisor at either your middle, Douglas County middle or high school. If you attend a private school or you're homeschooled, you're also welcome to sign up Great. for the conference. You can contact us through the website as well. And um, the opening remarks and keynote session are free and open to parents, educators, public officials, and the community at large. Wonderful. So lots of great opportunities for folks to get involved. But if all that sounds a tiny bit overwhelming as we kind of close this segment out, I want you to leave them with one surefire way to get in touch with you. So if we have a viewer right now who's listening, who says, maybe I'm not so sure about how to get in touch. I heard all this. I don't know if, it's, if my kids are involved. How do I do it? What's their very first step? Um, their very first step would be to reach out to us. If you go to Cobb and Douglas Public Health.com website, um, you can click on the page and go to the Live Healthy Douglas, and all of our public health educators are listed. Wonderful. And I encourage them to do that if they have any questions. Okay. And thank you so much for your good work. This is an important initiative. Okay, thank you. All right, we will be right back, but first, we're going to go out to the community calendar, so stay put. Welcome to this month's City Connector and the Interactive Community Calendar. I'm Kelly Hunter with Sarah Ray from the Chamber. Sarah, we've got lots of activities happening the month ahead. Yeah. Who do we have here with us? We have Charlene, and Charlene is here to tell us about some events for our deaf community. What you got going on? Well, I got a couple of things going on. First, I have in August, we're going to have a deaf social at Shane's, and it's going to be around 4 o'clock until 9 p.m. Then after that, in September, we're going to have two events. We're going to have the, my fifth annual Deaf Barbecue Picnic, which is going to be held at Lithia Springs Park. And it's from 12 noon until you get tired. So just bring a covered dish and a drink, and it's free to hard of hearing, deaf, and their families. And lastly, we're going to have my beginner sign language class, which starts in September also on the 13th. And that's going to be at the uh, Douglas County Library. So for more information, just check our Facebook page, which is Douglasville Deaf Social Group and it's on Facebook and you can just log in and I'll accept your friends and we welcome everybody to come out and enjoy yourselves. Perfect, and with the picnic, what date was the picnic on? Uh, Saturday, September the 6th. Okay. Perfect. Great, coming up and then for those who want to uh, help in this part of our community that may not be familiar, they have a new, you have a new sign, signing class. I do, I do. I have a new signing class. It's going to start September the 13th, yeah. and it's, the time is going to be determined. So you can contact me on my Facebook page, or you can call me directly at 770-990-8989. Great. Well, I think it's awesome that you guys are helping out in the deaf community. I know, you guys, I know you've been a huge advocate of it for years. Yeah. Um, and we really appreciate that. Well, we really appreciate all those who have um, come up and like I usually with this barbecue picnic, I usually get sponsorships from most of the Douglasville um, businesses here and it's really great that they come in and they offer uh, free food, we get hot dogs, we get bread, we get a whole lot of things. So we definitely want the community to come out and um, fellowship with us, learn some new signs, learn how to uh, intermingle with the deaf community and also learn some deaf culture. It's a real wonderful community of deaf people. Thank you for what you Thank do in you. our community here. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. We just learned something. There you go. There's a new one. Great. A new one. All right. We'll ask you to step over there. And coming up next, we have Donette. Hello, hello. Hello. How are you? Donette, you're from Power Light Kingdom. Yes, I am. Power Light Kingdom Center. And we have been a church body for the past four years. We are very exciting because we have acquired a new building. And yeah. so this fundraiser is actually to help put the building um, together, carpeting and chairs, and so that we can actually be more available and be out there for the community. We do offer a lot of family counseling, especially for marriages, and we are out there helping the homeless. And we have a very vibrant um, youth group that takes care of the youths to make sure that they have something to do. Well, very good. And so your event then that you have coming up is when? You have a nice flyer in hand. Yes, I have a nice flyer here. <laughs> and the event is um, on August 23rd. And we're having uh, this live gospel concert. We're having um, American music, African music, Caribbean music. 
We're also will be having a Caribbean cuisines and African mm. cuisines. So while you're listening to nice, lively music and quiet music, you'll also be entertained with dancing. We have um, power light dancers. Very They're cool. Very good. Yeah. So you have to see them. And we also have Dipper Center that does dancing too. So it will not just be singing, but we will have a, a variety in the program, some dancing, some singing, some miming. So it's going to be a great time. Great. And if people have questions on how to um, get more information, what's the best way to reach you? Phone, email, website, whatever. <laughs> okay. Well, the best way to reach us is to give us a call at 678-689-8841. And uh, we will definitely be able to provide directions and further information. Great. All right. Well, great. And much, Thank you so much success with your activity and Thank for your you. new church home, your church location. Thank yes. you. And the location, it will be 2531 at Bright Star Road. That's where the new church is. If you know where Covenant Plumbing is, we're just behind there. So um, it's easy to find. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you very Thank much. You. All Thank you right. for having me. No okay. problem. Like Who we I got said, next? Well, lots of things going on. Coming up next is Cindy Bennett. Hi, Cindy. How are hello, you? Hello, hello. How are you? All right. Uh, Cindy has a flyer in hand, too. Ooh, I like She's it. She's ready it's, to go, you think? We won't, we won't lose this one. I love the color, bright All yellow. Right. What you got going on? <laughs> okay, um, my name is Cindy, and I'm with Alan Turner Law. We're partnering with McKenna Farms Therapy Services, and we're hosting our second annual Poker for Ponies. It's a motorcycle rally and poker run. It's going to be held on September 13th. And it starts at noon and until 1:45. It's located at the Hiram Station at 3736 Highway 5. I mean Atlanta Highway, sorry. And that's in Hiram. The um, the kickstands go up at two o'clock, and the last spike is in at six. We're gonna have live music, entertainment. We're gonna have drawings, raffles, giveaways, um, lots of food, and lots of fun. It's $20 per rider and $5 per passenger. Very fun. Poker and ponies. I can't think of two more fun things to have yeah. a fundraiser with. There you go. I could actually do this one, motorcycle ride. Yeah. yeah. Kelly rides. 100% of the profit goes to disability, children with disabilities. Right. That's what the therapy that McKenna Farms yes. offers. Yes, awesome. What a great, you know, um, outreach here in the area. Yes. Yeah. And if people have questions on how to get more information, um, what's the best way for them to do that? It's 770-505-6979. Great. Thank you. Perfect. Thank Cindy, you so much. Great job. And coming up next, we know this gentleman in red. He's no stranger to the community. No, I'm no stranger to you ladies. That is for certain. That is for certain. But Hello. we will tell them. This is Jason. Yes. Jason, From what you got going on? Hey, next weekend, August 9th, we have our Rockin' with the Share House. Uh, fundraiser that we have with Sarah being on the board with the share house share house has been with Douglas County for 25 years and we're trying to get something to help them get motivated for the new school year and to help with it so we've got a lot of opportunities planned we have got the dunk tank now I've got the mayor of Douglasville is going to be there so y'all have an opportunity to dunk the mayor I have the chief Some of police people do. Yes. I don't think I could why not <laughs> Hey, it's your boss let's, let's get him down you know <laughs> the way we look we're gonna have Solid the chief of fundraising. police we're going to have the chief of police. Uh, we've got some other people going to be in the dunk tank. You included. Yes, right. Come dunk the leprechaun. That's what I'm going to say. Come dunk the leprechaun. Come get me. <laughs> um, but we've got some other stuff. Starla Womack is doing the bounce house for the children. We have Joey from Yogli Mowgli going to be there. We have a great big of our co-op sponsorships that we have that's mm -hmm. with us with our business uh, that's going to help support this great fundraising committee. So please come out. Bring the children. Allow us to uh, help this great uh organization and uh, have some good time. And maybe get your car washed while you're there. Get if your you car want washed. to. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> we are going to have raffles there too. So we're doing a, a iPad raffle and we're also doing a year free of car wash raffle. Oh, wow. So if you want to get free washes, you got to come in and sign up for it. So. Right. Yeah. And if people have questions about more information. They can get in contact with us. They can call our store, which is 678-213-2285 or they can get in touch with anybody at the Chamber of Commerce, talk to Sarah, Kimberly, they're all of that. They're taking care of that too. Uh, we're really looking forward to it. Uh, look at our website at autobuffexpress.com. Uh, we got some stuff on that too. So please come out next Saturday, August 9th. Let's support these guys and uh, really make a, a community effort out of it. Great. 
And I know the information is also on the ShareHouse Facebook page and sharehousedouglas.org too. So I know on behalf of ShareHouse, we're very excited that you guys are doing this fundraiser, but it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, we're excited and thank you all so much for allowing us to have it and sponsoring it. And we look forward to seeing everybody next week. Great. Right. Sounds great. Thank Thanks you. Guys. Thank you. What in the world would we do without Facebook? I know. What did we do before Facebook? I don't even know. How did we get the word out? All right. Well, Handwritten letters, typewriters. Yeah, a few of those things. So. <laughs> the Pony Express. <laughs> <laughs> but we still have the interactive community calendar yeah. here each and every month. Yes. So if you want to be part of that, show up here at 1130. Last, last Tuesday of the month. Last Tuesday of every month. You can let us know and the community know what you've got going on with your organization mm -hmm. here locally. We'll be back with more. Welcome back to City Connector. Joining us now is Elaine Bryant and Akila Maxwell with Caring and Sharing. Welcome. Thank you. And also John McDuffie, the store manager at Dillard's. Welcome, John. Thank you. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about the, a lot actually, about the BU Fashion Show in just a second. But first, for our viewers who might not be aware of Caring and Sharing, tell us, Elaine, what it is and what the mission is. That'll help us kind of get informed about the fashion show. All right. Caring and Sharing is an organization for girls ages 10 to 17. Our mission is to give girls access to the people information and experiences to help her to flourish. And what does that really mean? That means our Stir It Up Girls program, we work with the girls and discuss topics that are relevant to girls in their age range. Mm -hmm. We have a chariots component, it's outside activities with the girls. We do cultural events and just expose them to areas outside of their neighborhoods and those things that they're familiar with. Wonderful, and how does someone get involved with caring and sharing? Uh, all they need to do is go to our website, caringsharinginc.org, and um, complete an application, and that's it. All right. Now, you do a lot of wonderful events throughout the year. I know you do. I've yes. seen a lot of that uh, in the community, through the chamber, on the website. But this is one of my favorite, because you wouldn't know it by looking at me, but I tend to be a little bit of a fashion hog. And so this is a fun thing. This is the BU Fashion Show. So tell us a little bit about, first, location and date and time. Okay. The location is Dillard's Department Store here at Arbor Place Mall. It's September the 6th, Saturday at 2 p.m. Okay, now talk to us now about what's going to happen during the fashion show and why this is so important to your organization and to the folks involved. Okay, the BU Fashion Show, our aim is to provide a way for girls to build their confidence. And what better way than to build your confidence by walking the runway at Dillard's, walking with a stylish outfit, a trendy outfit, and just building your confidence at Dillard's. Fun. Now, Keila, you're involved in this, right? You're an adult volunteer. Yes. You look all fashionable, pretty Thanks. and blue today. <laughs> so what will you be doing with the fashion show, and what do you think this means to the youth who are involved? Well, I'll be assisting with the coordination of the event. I'll be helping the girls during their fitting, encouraging them, hopefully showing them how to walk the runway, you know, just being an extra hand during the fashion show and preparing um, up to that event. Are you going to show them how to do the walk down the runway? Well, I, I may show them a little something <laughs> with my with my accessory. <laughs> <laughs> I know you look great. You look yes. great. Now, um, John Dillard's, of course, is is sponsoring this. So tell me how you're going to be involved. Well, first of all, we appreciate the opportunity to be involved in such a great program, and and what Elaine does for the children in our community is is great and. And so, you know, Dillard's, um, I think we do more than sell clothes. I think, you know, at Dillard's, we sell image and attitude and confidence with, with the brands and the styles and fashions that we carry. So, so we're happy to, to take these girls and young ladies and, and, and fit them in some of the newest fashions and newest styles and, and hopefully teach them a little bit about fashion along the way and, and do a makeover on them. And, Ooh, that's and, fun. And yes. uh, give them an opportunity. We're going we're gonna to have a, the stage set up outside, uh, right, right outside the mall there on the second floor outside of our juniors department and uh, have some music and some fun and, and let them sh strut their stuff. That is a lot of fun. Is this the first time you guys have had a fashion show? No, this is our first time at Dillard's. Okay. This is our third fashion show. Wonderful. So I know the, the, the ladies must love being a part of that. About how many uh, teenagers do you expect to be involved in it? We'll have 15 girls Ooh. and we'll have some of Caring and Sharing's supporters as well walk the runway. 
who are also youth and girl serving organizations. Wonderful. So you have community leaders as well as, yes. as, as the teens and the girls in the program. Yes. Wonderful. Now, if someone wanted to help with the fashion show, would they also just give you a call or go out to the yes. website? Yes. They can go to the website, www.caringsharinginc.org, and just complete an application, or they can call 404-680-3419. Okay. Now, Keela, how long have you been involved with Caring and Sharing? I actually just got involved this year, early February, and I've always been interested in helping young girls, being a role model, and, you know, just being a listening ear and mentor for them. And what have you seen when, when girls have gone through the program, been a part of the program? What do you see happen to them? I see growth. This, um, this type of program provides the girls with a platform to express themselves. They're exposed to so many different opportunities. And, um, you know, we have speakers that come in and talk to the girls and educate them and, you know, just kind of provide them with a, a foundation yeah. on how to be a strong woman and, and you know, how to you know, just be yourself and accept who you are. Great. Confidence. Yes. Confidence. Absolutely. Now, John, are they going to, are you guys going to pick some of the clothing for them? Do you lay that out? How does that work from your end? Absolutely. We'll work with uh, each, each girl and, and also the volunteers individually and, and look to uh, help them select a style for them that, that's you know, representative of their personality. I love that. And, and, and also show off some of the fall and back to school fashions that we have to offer. Okay. Well, wonderful. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's let's take a look at this. Very nice. So, if uh, what's the last opportunity for folks to sign up for the fashion show or to be involved? I mean, you already have your girls picked. I mean, you have them already yes, lined we up. Yes, do. Okay. We do. So, if you wanted to be a, a volunteer with it or maybe donate in some way, yes, there's still time for that, right? Oh, yes. Always time for donations on yes. our website. Mm -hmm. And Which also, there's we want people to come out and support the girls too. We we'd love to have a great audience, a great audience participating and, and applauding these young ladies for cheer them on. Yeah, and that is a lot of fun. I've been involved with fashion shows before and there's nothing like hearing the music crank up, right? And and, yes. and sashaying down the runway. So a lot it's of exciting. fun. It is exciting. Yeah. Now aside from the fashion show, what else do you guys need at caring and sharing? Why do we want to leave with our viewers? Well what I want to leave with the viewers is that what we plan to do with BU Fashion Show is to boost a girl's confidence so that she will feel confident in knowing who she is, confident in her gifts and her talents so that she can be who she is comfortably. I love that. So once again, that's Saturday, September the 6th. Yes. At what time? 2 p.m. 2 p.m., second floor, right outside the junior department of Dillard's, right? right. And so we want it packed out there to make these girls yes. feel super special. Yes. yes. All right, wonderful. Elaine, Keila, John, thank you so much for joining us today. And I look forward to seeing all of you on September 6th. Thank, thank you. you. All right, take care. We will be right back with our local talent, so don't change the channel. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Guess it's true, I'm not good at a one night stay. But I still need love, cause I'm just a man. These nights never seem to go to plan. I don't want you to leave, will you hold my hand? Oh, won't you stay with me? Cause you're Darling, stay with me Why am I so emotional? No, it's not a good look, it's some self-control And deep down I know this never works 
Can you lay down with me so it doesn't hurt? Oh, won't you stay with me? Cause you're all I need This ain't love, it's clear to see But darling, stay Smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Welcome back to City Connector. I know that you're having a great time finding out all the wonderful people, places, and events that we have going on right here in the city of Douglasville and Douglas County. Joining me now at the table is Taurus Madrick Morris. She's a co-owner of the Douglasville Boxing Club, and also you are the president of A Chance to Win, a nonprofit organization focusing on youth in our area. Welcome, Taurus. Thank you for having me, Lee. Um, yes, we are focusing on the teenagers. Um, and I am the co-owner of Douglasville Boxing Club, in which we've been there for it'll be four years this year. Wow. And what I'm finding, I guess I'm a person of action, and when I'm seeing these teenagers and the parents complaining about what's going on in the community and they're fighting out there and they're not making good decisions, it, made it, it makes me want to do something. And so you did something. So I did something. Okay. So what I did is I created a nonprofit called A Chance to Win. And what I want to do is give young adults a chance to win um, in their transition to adulthood. So what does that mean? That means they want to have fun. Mm -hmm. And so we want them to have fun. Sure. But we want them to have positive fun. So my focus is on creating a positive environment to where we have our teen nights, our teen parties, our game trucks, our fight previews, our, uh, we, we try to come up with things that they will enjoy. But what I'm doing, I'm letting the teenagers organize it. So I'm just overseeing it and giving them the resources to be who they want to be. Um, what I'm finding, these teenagers, they don't want to be talked to. They don't want to go to any more programs. They're tired of the pastor talking to them. <laughs> They're tired of mama keep telling them what to do. Uh -oh. They don't want uh, to listen to anybody. So I'm trying to put them in their own environment, in a party-like environment that mm -hmm. is chap chaperoned, of sure, course. Sure. The music is positive music because I believe um, the music that they're listening to, to today is creating a lot of that negative behavior. So I'm anti-twerk, <laughs> but I don't mind the stinky leg <laughs> and all the yeek and all the other new dances they do. Well, actually, I'm glad you didn't ask me to do any twerking. So that is a very positive, that's a positive environment for me already, I can and tell see, you. <laughs> and, and they're tempted, but we want them to be who they are, but we want to show them a, a better direction in the perception that they're putting on themselves. Right. We want you to dance and, you know, we had a nay nay contest for our last teen night. Mm -hmm. We want to have fun. We want you all to have fun. So let's talk about that for a second. Yes. Okay. So these are teen nights. So every other Friday. Correct. Okay. And they're at the Douglasville Boxing Club. Yes. So talk to me about the times. Yes. The time is 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock um, because curfew was at midnight. So right. we want to stay in compliance. So from 8 to 11, um, and I'll just, for an example, because we just kicked it off the Friday before last, 
the teens were playing cards. We had a live DJ. We had the game truck out there. They were gaming. Mm -hmm. And um, we just had fun. And the good thing about it, while I brought them out into their own environment, we shut down about a little after 10. And we talked to the teenagers, and they were able to give their input and what they like and what they don't like and what they want to do. And the positive thing that came about that is one of the, a couple of teens are given the next teen night on August um, 16th, I think is their date. Okay. So th they're organizing these things. It's not coming from me. It's coming from the teenagers. So you're having that conversation. You're We're seeing having, what's in the, in the community. And then you're sitting down, kind of focus group. And you're yes. saying, tell me what would, what, what would it take for you guys to come here on a Friday night yes. from 8 to 11 p.m. and not go off and do some of these other things? What would, would be fun for you? Yes. And you're taking those suggestions. And I'm taking their some suggestions and I'm letting them organize. And I just, it, it just brightened my spirit when I got an email from one of the teenagers and he called my flyers lame. Oh, no. So he redesigned the flyer <laughs> and he already created his Instagram, Twitter, whatever they do. Sweet. I said, that is okay with me. That's great. He already has this DJ. He said, I said, email me the playlist because it has to be approved. So they're taking the initiative there themselves and creating the environment that they want to create. So again, it's just letting them be who they want to be, but giving them the resources and direction to, to do that, to stay appropriate in what you want to do. And um, we have another teenager, he's coordinating a monologue. Mm -hmm. We're looking for fashion, you know, teenagers that can sew and create fashions and put on your own fashion show. Sure. So this is something for the teens, by the teens. So how do they get involved? So obviously this is a great way for people to find out about it, but how are they gonna get involved and say, hey, either A, I wanna participate mm -hmm. and be a part of putting activities together, or B, I just wanna come and check this out and see what's going on. Absolutely, they can either go to our website, a chance to win for teens .com, mm -hmm. or we're also on the Douglasville Boxing Club website. Um, and we're also on Twitter and Instagram. They can stop by. They can call me, uh, my number, 404-702-7359. That's also on all the websites. Right. I'm very accessible. So um, it's, it's easy to reach out. We're also with the teenagers. We have the teen talk show coming up. So we're auditioning. Um, my team is getting the mics and everything ordered, so hopefully we should start taping. I'm hoping next week. I'm pushing them. Fun. But we just want to give the teenagers a platform to express themselves and really, really um, make positive decisions. Because while we don't want them to, to drink and to smoke and do other things, well, what can we do? Right. All right, well, what is it that you want to do? Give them somewhere else an alternative, you right? It, you're taking something away, you got to replace it with something. So is there a charge for folks to come, for the teens to come to the night? It is $5. Pretty reasonable. Pretty reasonable. Most teams have that in their pocket. Uh, exactly. So only five dollars just to offset some of our costs, and you know they just come in this Friday, August first, uh, from eight to eleven. We're having a fight preview where we're having from Douglasville Boxing Club our pr uh, pro and amateur fighters. They're going to teach them some things how to box, and also we're going to have some sparring going on, and we're going to make it very interactive where they can learn some self-defense moves and have some mentorship. Because like I said, we're really mentoring right. and putting the messages in, but we're doing it by, we're sneaking in through the back door. <laughs> okay. Well, sometimes you have to do that with a teen, right? Exactly. So while they think they're having fun, we're, we have our hands behind our back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen to this too. Exactly. Well, I really like the fact, it's really interesting that you are connected, obviously, with the boxing club because a lot of teens really need a, lot of, a physical outlet, physical fitness, and you have some other wonderful youth programs in the boxing club as well, not just yes. a chance to win. Absolutely. We, we have our Gloves Not Drugs program, and that focuses on teenagers as well. Mm -hmm. And what we do, we teach the teenagers how to fight. They are placed with a mentor someone that they can call, not just come to the gym, they can call, they're teaching them how to fight and how to compete, they're in tournaments throughout Georgia, and they really have that one-on-one -on -one brother that's gonna be with them a lifetime. I and, love that. How did you yes. as a female get involved in that? I had to ask this question, you know, yes, right? Yes, my husband. Okay. My husband, like, I'm already a part, of, well, I was a part of the corporate American. I was a, a broker. I've always had my own business for a long time now. So he was fighting amateurly, and then he rolled over to pro. So he's a pro fighter. And he opened up the gym for his personal training. So I said, uh, no, that's not a good business decision. 
So we opened it up to the public and started creating classes. Right. And just my personality, I'm like, well, we need to make a difference in the community sure. while we're here because we have the resources. So it started off with my husband fighting. All right, and now you've expanded it to the youth programs, the Girls Fight Smart. I love yes. it. You have a graduation program, bullyproof boxing, the gloves, not drugs. And yes. now that has gone a step further with a chance to win nonprofit. Exactly. We're always trying to be better uh, from the previous year. So whatever we can do, the Girls Fight Smart program, again, another mentorship program where they're placed with a, another female. They can call, they have the number, they have the contact. We teach them to fight, we teach them to compete, and we do have girl fighters. And so we're always looking to, um, for t female boxers who want to learn how to. You don't have to know how now, but right. if you want to learn, we'll teach you. You can teach me. I'll teach you. I would love that. Okay. okay. Come by. I would Anytime. love that. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Super. So what do you need in terms of, of additional support for your nonprofit? If someone we, out there wanted to get involved, how would that happen? Absolutely. We're looking, donations is always a plus because it's not cheap. You know, we have, we, we have a whole nother building that we have now just for the teenagers, you know. So donations with the programs, you know, some people, we look for volunteers, but everyone is not volunteer, they wanna be paid. So right. donations, donations, donations. And then if you don't have the, the funds, then of course volunteer. Sure. Uh, because uh, we need adult volunteers to help the teens structure what they're trying to do. And as always, we need our teen volunteers because we are looking to build the teen council to add on as m many as possible. It's a movement. Okay, it's just not a couple of people we want. We want positive teens that are, um, that can send positive messages throughout their community and their peers. Because again, the teenagers, they don't want to listen to us anymore. Right, they're talking to each other. They're and, talking to each and other. And that kind of word of mouth among them, very powerful. Exactly, so we're just going to play telephone. We're going to whisper in one teen's ear and then let it travel Super. throughout. <laughs> All right, so as we wind this down, we talked about a lot today. What is the one thing you want to leave with the viewers? Tell them again how to get in touch with you and, yes. and if a teen wants to come, how they can do that. Yes, you get in touch with me either through DouglasvilleBoxingClub.com. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, that's DouglasvilleBoxing.com or chance to win for teens.com. That's the websites. Um, or you can call my numbers on both of those websites. Okay. Um, and I'm looking for, I need more men volunteer because I found that we had a lot of women chaperones. Mm -hmm. And even though, you know, I did have the city police circling, I, I do want to see some men coming in and really enforcing a safe environment. Uh, with the females, uh, we need all volunteers. We need mainly teen volunteers all right. for the teen council so that they can organize the next event. I don't care, like I said, we have someone doing organizing a monologue, the next teen po po uh, party. So whatever you're interested in, I don't care if you want to teach a, a sewing workshop, it's whatever you're, you can give back to. They Everyone need, is blessed with something. They need to go ahead and call you up and say, here's what my gift and here's how I want to share it. Exactly. Okay, yes. wonderful. All right, well, Taurus, thank you so much for being on City Connector today thank and good you. luck and I look forward to hearing about all the great things. Absolutely, thanks for having me. All right, okay. so mark your calendar for all those teen nights and send your teen on over. And in the meantime, hold tight for the interactive community calendar that's coming up next. Well, welcome back to the interactive community calendar. Who do we have up? Well, I shouldn't ask, should I? I was going to say, she's here every month. All right. Cassia, how are you hey, doing today? I am doing great. I'm doing great. Always good to be in both of your companies, so I'm doing awesome today. All right. Well, what do we have going on with Beyond the Front Porch? All right. I'm always happy to let you know what's going on with Beyond the Front Porch. So in August, we are already filled up for our field trip to the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. So it's going to be really exciting. Um, we're going to take 57 participants wow. down to Huntsville, Alabama, yeah. so to the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. So I wanted to let the audience know that right after that field trip, you can start registering for our September trip, which is going to be to Zoo Atlanta. So who Fun. doesn't want to do? <laughs> Nice trip. Yes, very nice trip, very nice trip. And this is a good way for us to start off our school year. So definitely, um, you know, look out for us next month. We're going to the Zoo Atlanta. Um, just remember, beyondthefrontporch.org. Um, and especially that our field trips are on the second Saturday of every month. So with that, um, the activity, transportation, and lunch is included for our children that's on free and reduced lunch, no charge to them. 
So we want to make sure that we get our children exposed and get them out there and having a good time at these places. All right. That's so, so fun. August booked up, yes. but you can get uh, right after that uh, trip, get signed up for the September right, Zoo Atlanta. Right. So the Wednesday after, the Wednesday after August 9th. So you the 11th. Can, right. Is that wow. the Wow. Look at her. Okay. I can't do that. But anyway, so that yeah, so registration will open up August the 11th for Zoo Atlanta, and um, we just want the kids to come out and have a good time with us, and you know, learn about our animals, learn about the different regions, and you know, different reptiles and all those things that are out there, and make new friends, and make new friends, especially that's that's one of the biggest benefits, and spend time with family. Well, we appreciate cool. what Beyond the For Porch does here in our community. Well, thank you, thank you. Um, and the website is beyondthefrontporch.org, and um, that's it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right. And more activities, more things happening this month. Who yes. do we have up next? We have uh, our friend Jennifer Moore from the Board of Commissioners office. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, ladies. Hello. How are you today? Hi, Jennifer. Now, have we had Jennifer between no. us here? No. No, I didn't think so. So, she's, like, oh, so she's so excited to be here today. <laughs> what do you have to tell us about? So I know today, what it's going to be. So today I'm talking about Christmas trees, our festival of trees. This will be our second year. It started out last year as my Leadership Douglas Classes project. Okay. Um, but we want to continue it annually as a community project. This year, um, we will auction trees off. All the proceeds from the silent auction will go to benefit the Mills on Wheels program for Douglas County. Okay. Um, our goal is to have 40 Christmas tree entries and raise $5,000. Uh, we are asking for businesses, citizens, high school clubs to enter Christmas trees. Um, we would like the entries no later than Aug October 15th. Um, and we will be giving awards this year. Um, some of the awards will be Santa's favorite, which would be the most traditional Christmas tree, um, most whimsical, which would be most non-traditional, um, and then we're going to do a best overall. Um, so the trees will be on display from Mo Monday, November the 3rd through um, November the 21st, and that last week, the 17th through the 21st, is when we will hold our silent auction. And these are not just normal Christmas trees, if anybody went last no. year. From what I understand, They yes. have some pretty cool ones with some really cool pretty stuff great. on them. They're not yes. just decorated with ornaments. I know, do you we, have like an example of a tree? We had a candy tree. We had a Candyland themed tree, and it was nothing but actual edible candy on it. Oh, nice. We had a movie tree with DVDs, movie passes, popcorn, candy. Some of the businesses put gift cards on the trees. Yeah, sure. So and some are just yeah. really pretty. Like it's Very it's a neat, pretty. neat, neat, neat program. And where are the trees on display? The they will be on display on the third floor of the courthouse on the administrative side. And actually um, on the first night, the third, November 3rd, Monday from 4 to 8 p.m. We're going to have a big kickoff night. We're going to have snacks and music and everybody's going to come and decorate their tree together. So we'll have a big Christmas party. Oh. It's kind of like a presentation and an unveiling, I guess. Talking about Christmas in July. <laughs> Christmas the end of July. July. There you yes. go. Yes. All right. Great. So please contact me, Jennifer Moore. You can contact me at 770-920-7440 or email me at jmoore at co.douglas.ga.us. Great. Well, much success with the uh, Festival of Trees. Yes. Thank you. Great. Thank you, ladies. Thanks, Thanks Jennifer. All right. And last, but certainly not least, Someone we have new in our community. another new community member. Hi. Hey, Judy. Hi. Nice to meet you. It's so nice to be here. And you are with In Loving Hands. Yes. And what do you have coming up for us to share? Well, we'll have our ribbon cutting coming up in August. Yay. I don't have an exact date. That's for me and you to talk yes. about later. Absolutely. I didn't get that part, but like two <laughs> seconds ago. Absolutely. Um, we have an adult day center here mm -hmm. in Douglasville. We're a new provider. And we uh, take care of disabled adults, seniors, and veterans. Very cool. Yes. Uh, from what I understand, you're in the downtown service area. Yes. You have a uh, home that you've renovated and I guess had to do some customization for that. Tell us about that location. Absolutely. We're right off of Spring Street in Douglasville, right across from the post office mm -hmm. or right down the street a little bit. But like you said, it is a, a beautiful home and we have did a lot of renovations. The place is absolutely gorgeous. And so far, the clients that we do have, they are enjoying their stay. Uh, we do activities throughout the day. We do music and movement. We do uh, we have uh, our breakfast and our lunch, and we do monthly outings as well. 
So if someone's looking for interest in the adult uh, daycare operation and your services, how can they get in touch with you? They can reach us at area code 770-485-9451. Great. Very good. Yes. Well, welcome to the downtown community, and we will chat and have a ribbon cutting date very soon. Yes. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Thank you Judy. All right. Lots going on. No. Lots of community and opportunity for people to connect with this place that we call home, our local area here. You can so. tell that school's coming back. All oh, the events are coming up, and I know that there are tons that we have listed on here. But also visit Douglas or Doug. Was it visit Douglasville.com and the Douglasvillecalendar.com? Calendar. That's right. Both have even more events that we have that are going on. And definitely all the Facebook pages that the chamber has, yes. as well as City TV, the City of Douglasville, different Facebook pages. <laughs> we that could go on have. and yeah, on and on. <laughs> you know, this mall is busting today when you're yeah. talking about uh, back to school. I bet we've got yes. a lot of shoppers here yes. happening. Yes. And tax free weekend is August first and second. So. If, if you're gets around, out there, get a, get yeah, out if there. we can get it up fast enough, just know August 1st and 2nd is tax-free holiday. There you go. If you've got an event you'd like to uh, let the community know, promote, you have the opportunity here on City Connector and the interactive community calendar. Sarah, tell them when and how. Yep, last Tuesday of the month here at Arba Place Small Food Court at 1130. So come hang out with us. All right, and grab a bite. Yeah, to lunch. The food court. That's there what I'm go. doing. <laughs> All right, we'll be back with more City Connector. Welcome back. Joining us again is Michaela Grace Watson. I know that you loved listening to her earlier, and you're going to get to hear her again in just a second. But first, we're going to learn a little bit about you, Michaela. So how long have you been singing? I've been singing since uh, I was about two or three. Okay, and playing? Um, about six years now. Wow. All right, super. And what kind of music do you generally do? Um, a little bit of everything. Um, Anything from the Beatles to Guns N' Roses to Mumford & Sons, I'm, I'm kind of weird. Good stuff. I <laughs> yeah. think I heard you practicing a little bit of Ellie Goulding earlier, yes? Wonderful. Now, you, you also sing around the community, churches, places um, like that? I'm mostly at church right now. Um, I used to sing a whole lot around the whole southeast, but right now just at church. All right. Wonderful. Now, if you had to choose your favorite genre of music, I'm going to pin you down now. Come on, you can do it. Mm. What would be your favorite genre? Understanding, of course, that you sing all of it because you're wildly talented. <laughs> but what's your favorite? Um, probably, probably indie. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. Now, I know you're going to be singing for us in just a minute. If people love the sound, and I know that they've already listened to it and dig it, how can they find out more about you online? Um, I'm on Facebook as Michaela Grace Watson, uh, Instagram as Michaela Grace 94 and YouTube as Michaela Grace Watson. All right. So I encourage folks, go out there, find out more about Michaela because she is fabulous. And also, I want to thank you for joining us on this edition of City Connector. We've had a wonderful show. You can see us on Channel 22. You can see us on other channels. You can see us on YouTube. You can see us on Facebook. You can see us on the City of Douglasville website. We are everywhere, and we appreciate you. On behalf of all of us here at City TV, I'll see you next time. Michaela, I'm leaving it with you. Look 